Bible, reading a chapter each day from the New Testament. In Acts 1 verse 8, we read the words of the risen Lord Jesus to his disciples the day of his ascension. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Lord, be with us today in the power of your spirit as we continue reading your word together. In your name we pray. Amen. Our reading today is Acts chapter 8, following the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7. And speaking of Stephen's death, Acts chapter 8 begins with the chilling words, And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him, but Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralysed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time a man named Simon had practised sorcery in the city, and amazed all the people of Samaria. He bo boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptised, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on them, any of them. They had simply been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. 
Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This chapter begins with the sentence, and Saul approved of their killing him. This is a reference to the stoning of Stephen from yesterday's passage. From this horrific killing, a persecution broke out in Jerusalem that led to a scattering of many of the disciples. They dispersed across the region. Saul's persecution of the followers of Jesus, which he intended to be a means of getting rid of these followers, only led to the opportunity to spread the gospel far and wide. One of these followers is Philip, who finds himself in Samaria, performing signs, healing and proclaiming the word to crowds of people so that great joy broke out in the city. But it is from that place, a place where Philip is telling many people about the good news of Jesus, that the Lord calls Philip to go on a journey. Philip isn't told who he's going to or where he is going, just that he needs to go south on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. As a brief aside, when I read this, my thoughts were not a road that I would want to be on just at the moment. Let's keep remembering the people of that region in our prayers. But Philip, he is travelling south and he hears words that he knows very well being read aloud. Philip, a man who we have read about in chapter 6, as being one of the men, men chosen to serve because he was full of the spirit and wisdom. Philip, who is sensitive to the spirit's leading, wastes no time in approaching this man who is reading the words of Isaiah, but a man who has no understanding of what he is reading. Philip, full of wisdom, full of the spirit, explains the words, introduces the man to Jesus and has that joy of baptising him. Philip could have said no when he was told to go on his journey. He was seeing many people turn to Jesus in Samaria. Why would he want to leave? But the Lord spoke and Philip obeyed. He heard the calling to go and he went. He left many behind to speak to just one man. Remember the shepherd left his sheep for the one who was missing. And in heaven, the angels rejoice when one person turns to Jesus. Just recently, I came across a quote. It wasn't attributed, but it said, Helping one person might not change the world, but it might change the world for one person. Philip certainly changed the world for this one person. Philip, who could have stayed in Samaria where exciting things were happening, but, but instead was obedient to the voice of the Spirit and went when and where he was called. Philip, full of wisdom, who was listening out for and taking every opportunity to share the gospel. Am I? Are we? able to say that we are like Philip and listening for those opportunities to tell others. We don't need to be telling many. Let's go into today listening for the spirits leading, seeing who we are called to walk with, who we are called to talk with, who we are called to tell of Jesus. Let's pray. We don't see many chariots these days. And when we stand in queues, we stand two metres apart. But that doesn't mean that we don't see people who need to hear about Jesus. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit can't say to us, as he said to Philip, go. Go over there. Listen to what that person is saying and and say something helpful. 
O oh Lord, we thank you for the examples of the apostles, for the examples of the deacons like Philip, because they're speaking to us of ordinary Christians who made a difference in the world in which they were living. Oh Lord, please help me to hear what it is you are saying to me today, that I may speak and share with others. In Jesus' name. Amen.